our keynote speaker, Mr. Juan Garcia. Uh, Mr. Garcia was selected to serve as administrator for the Farm Service Agency in July of 2012. This is a very high level position. He previously served as deputy administrator for farm programs where he managed all of FSA's programs under the Production Emergencies and Compliance Division, Conservation and Environmental Programs Division, and Price Support Division. He served as the state director for the state of Texas and as the agricultural program manager for the Farm Service Agency in Texas. He's had a 35-year career with USDA during which he has received many honors and awards, uh, including the prestigious FSA Administrator's Award for Service to Agriculture. He's a native of, is it Lyford, Texas? Which is on the southern part of Texas, and he was raised on his family 500-acre farm. He received a Bachelor of Science degree in Animal Science from Texas A&I in Kingsville, which is now Texas A&M in Kingsville. And he was recognized by the as the College of Agriculture's 200, 2010 Hall of Honors alumnus. Mr. Garcia and his wife, Belinda, have three grown children. Please help me welcome Mr. Juan Garcia. Thank you, Susan. Good morning. Thank you all for, for the invitation here. As Susan mentioned, I am from Texas and she mentioned the very southern part of Texas, so I never get to see snow, okay? So I am in awe with all the snow here. It, I was, we were coming over here, I was just clicking pictures on my iPhone. I mean, you have to understand, you know, I'm from where it gets 102 degrees when it, in the summer, and only twice in my life have I seen snow where I'm from, and it only was about maybe half an inch each time. So we're going crazy out there trying to build a snowman and things like that. But it, it melted within hours. And so, nah, but it's, uh, it's beautiful here. I, I was flying in and just white. I'd like to come over here in, in a different time of the year when, whenever you are gr growing crops. And what I've seen, what I've, what I've heard is that you all do a great job in, in the agricultural area here in, in Minnesota. So... Uh, Thank you for the invitation here. As Susan mentioned, I am the administrator of the Farm Service Agency. It's part of 17 uh, agencies within the Department of Agriculture. And uh, she mentioned that I did grow up on a farm uh, in Texas. Uh, how many of you here are involved in agriculture? Raise your hand. Okay, I need a little more hands. I'm gonna get you some more hands. How many of you here eat? Okay, there we go, we got the hands up, right? How many of you here wear blue jeans? There we go. Well, if you eat and if you wear blue jeans, you're involved in agriculture. And I say that because I'm a cotton farmer back in Texas, and I like for people to be paying those $80 blue jeans, <laughs> like my daughter pays. I went crazy one day. I took her to the, to the mall, my wife and I, and she was looking for a pair of blue jeans, and. They didn't want to tell me how much they paid for the jeans. I still wear those old cowboy, I, I grew up on a farm and ranch, I wear boots and they're you know maybe $20, but it's crazy. But I don't get that much money for, it, it takes a pound and a half of cotton to make a pair of jeans, okay? But I only may get like $1.50 for that pound and a half of cotton. So somebody else is making the money. But anyway, good. I'm, I'm glad that you all are involved in agriculture, right? So <clears throat> I know that, that many of you here are immigrants. And you might be interested to know that my great-great-grandfather was also an immigrant. Uh, immigrated from, from the country of Mexico back in the late 1800s. And so that's, that's why I'm excited to be here today because years from now, your, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren will be like me. Uh, they may be someday given a speech in front of an audience like this and will say their success has started with the seeds that you all planted. So for those of you unfamiliar with Farm Service Agency, 
typically FSA. We have over 2,000 offices throughout the nation in almost every county uh, in the nation. We also have offices in Hawaii, which is, is part of the United States, you know. And we have offices in Guam, and we have offices in the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. So we, we cover a large area, and we cover a large area of producers. So our network of offices is unlike uh, any other agency. And RCS, uh, Mr. Wilson came up, I mean, they also have a large network of, of offices uh, throughout the United States and these countries. So the closest example, just to, uh, to give you an, an example, is like the post office, where you go buy stamps or you go send, you know, send mail. You know, in, in a small town, there's that little post office you can always depend on. In those small towns, we have USDA offices that, that you can depend on. So we, we are the gateway, we feel, uh, USDA to, to the farmers and ranchers across America. We, we focus, uh, as Deb mentioned, on, on new and beginning farmers and immigrant farmers like, like yourself. So our network of offices is how we provide that, those personal services to you all, to other farmers throughout the country. And that's what I want to talk to you a little about today. So I'm very proud that FSA is one of the original co-founders of this, of this conference. Folks, this is one of a kind kind of conference. This kind of conferences do not happen everywhere in the nation. So uh, I, I want to compliment Susan, you and, and, and the committee and, and compliment you all for attending in this cold day. Heck, you know, I would have probably stayed home on a Saturday and been sleeping, but you all are here. And, and, and that is wonderful, so you can get that, that information that you need. But, but I want to I say something here. Last fall, President Obama announced that two of his top three priorities for the remainder of the year would be a farm bill and an immigration bill. So as some of you may know, you know, farm bill is a legislation that establish the food and agricultural priorities for the U.S. normally for a period of five years. And when I speak about Farm Bill, I speak about programs that we have with Farm Service Agency, that Extension has, that NRCS has, uh, all the other agencies, but that also includes nutrition, uh, the Food Nutrition Service, of uh, food stamps, uh, women, infants, and children's programs. That's all part of this farm bill. In fact, over 75% or close to 75% of the total budget, the total amount of money that comes from the farm bill goes to nutrition services. Okay, So the other 25% goes to programs for us, for NRCS, for extension, for research, uh, many other things that, that USDA does. So the Farm Bill is very important, and Congress takes a look at this every five years. Why every five years? I don't know. I'm going to have to ask a congressman, David, about, about that. But, but, but really, agricultural changes so much every year. I mean, I think you look at the past five years, agriculture changes. So. It's wise to look at it every now and then and see what changes um, need to be made. So as, 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 as this week in the State of the Union, the President said, again, emphasize the importance of agriculture. He talked about how we must continue to work to strengthen the biofuel economy, a sector that's very important to Minnesota agriculture and, and other parts of the country. He talked about the importance of international trade, selling American products overseas. That's important. 98% of U.S. exporters are small businesses like, your, like yourselves, 98%. So our farm exports have experienced the strongest five-year period of economic growth in history. But many of you sell your products locally uh, in farmer's markets, restaurants, 
schools, all kinds of places. So the message that the president, and the message the president was that he will not stand still. If you listen to the State of the Union, he said that. He will not stand still. He will keep moving forward, invest in the first class jobs to create a first class economy here in the United States. So what does that mean for you all here in this room? What does that mean for us? Well, it means you're part of the president's plan. So it also means that you can rely on U.S. Department of Agriculture to help keep your farming operations strong, to keep your farming operations growing. So what you've built becomes better than you've ever known, helping your, you, your family, your neighbors, and your communities. That's very important. So the leader of the U.S. Department of Agriculture, I've been talking to you about USDA, which has quite a few agencies, is Secretary Tom Vilsack. Uh, he's originally from, from the state of Iowa, which is not too far from here. Uh, but he's worked hard over the past five years to implement the president's vision uh, for farmers like yourselves and other farmers throughout the country. So over the past five years, the number of farmers markets in the U.S. has grown by 67%. That's quite a bit. A lot of farmers markets around. I live in Washington, D.C. During the summer and spring, every, every Saturday, they have several farmers markets around there, and it, people just flock to get homegrown tomatoes and squash and all kinds of vegetables. It's amazing the number of people, and they sell everything. So USDA now has close to 8,000 farmers markets on our official list, 8,000. Other, the other thing are food hubs, which are central locations that collect and market and distribute local foods are also increasing nationwide. There are, there are now more than 200 food hubs in, 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 throughout the nation in operation, which has increased about 68% also. I know that you're going to have a topic, I think, tomorrow or today on, on food hubs. So, in fact, over the past five years, food grown locally like the crops you grow has been among the top 10 trends as recognized by the National Restaurant Association. So, gosh, that means, boy, you're doing something good. You're doing something people want. If you have a product that people want, they're going to buy it, right? So organic, uh, you know, vegetables, people want that. So it's, it's important. So it's also a sign that Secretary Vilsack's plan for farmers like you is, is, is becoming a successful plan. But most of all, it's a sign that your hard work each day and every way. USDA wants for you to continue this momentum to help you grow and your farming operation become stronger. So I mentioned earlier, I'm not just talking about vegetables. There's a lot of farming going on through the United States, right? I'm a cotton farmer. A lot of people here in Minnesota grow corn and, and, and they grow soybeans. But we, we are very interested in, in diverse agriculture from USDA also. So, so the, for those farmers that that are here today who have worked with USDA. Many of you may not have worked with us before. Uh, much of what I will say today may be familiar, but for those others, I hope you learned something from us today about all the ways that we may be able to help you. So I'd like to share a little bit of information on, on our programs that we have. Uh, first, one of the largest barriers, the things you have to overcome is having a network of support systems or groups that can help you navigate through legal issues, through your financial situations, your tax issues, uh, technology that can help you improve the way you grow your crops or, or raise your, your cattle. So there's a lot of different sponsors here today that will provide that support function for you all. So on behalf of USDA, and, and I think I can speak for, for any of the other organizations here that are today, 
we pledge our, our support. I pledge our support for you all every step of the way as we, as we work in partnership with you all. So if you're a new farmer, I, I would encourage you to visit our offices. Uh, when you come in, we, you know, we look at your, your farm on a map. We can make you a copy of it, a photograph. We'll assign a farm number for you. Uh, when, so when you register your farm, uh, we have your address. We can provide you with information, the latest information of any programs that we have. So it's important to stay in contact uh, with you. So uh, <clears throat> I, I, want, I want to tell you that once you start giving us information, I want to make sure that you understand that USDA is required by law to keep all of your personal and private information safe and confidential. We are not going to give it away to anyone unless you authorize us to give the information out. So I, I want to assure you of that. You know, uh, I think you can, you can speak to any longtime farmer that has done business with us, and I think they can tell you that they can trust USDA, trust our agencies to keep that information uh, confidential. So uh, another, another thing about, you know, if, if you want to become a farmer, so what, who do you call? Who, you know, what is it that you have to have? Well, you have to have land, right? You have to obtain land. And sometimes it's tough ob obtaining crop land to, to farm. Someone else may pay a higher rent price than, than you can pay. It's difficult. So uh, land is expensive, land rent is expensive, and, but we don't sell land. USDA does, does not sell land. But there's thousands of, of acres of maybe churches, schools, towns, absentee landowners that don't live within the state, live somewhere else, that are looking at renting their, their land to, to someone to, to grow crops. So, you know, we, we may have a conduit there. Some people sometimes may talk to us and say, hey, I'm looking for a renter. They may post something on our bulletin board that we may be able to help you. So if you're a new and beginning farmer and you know someone who is selling farmland, USDA may be able to help you purchase that land. So visit an FSA office to learn more about this. So you don't even have to earn land to participate in FSA programs and in NRCS programs. If you rent land, you're, you're eligible to participate. Uh, let's talk about what else you need for farming operation. I think Susan mentioned there's going to be a tractor out there that you can go look at today. Yeah, you need equipment, right? You know, you need capital, you need, you need land, uh, you need uh, equipment. Uh, so that also can be very expensive. Uh, the banks can, can help. Uh, we can also help with some low interest loans to purchase equipment. We can help with loans to provide you with the needed money to grow your crops. Uh, Sometimes we can even include family living expenses in, in those loans. So uh, visit an FSA office to learn more. So for those of you who grow fruits and vegetables, I think probably many of you may grow fruits and vegetables, we have a program, I think that Deb mentioned, uh, the Non-Insured Assistance Program. It's a long old title, right? I hate these long titles that we give. But it's, it's called NAP. And what, what we can do there, we can offer you security in case of a disaster uh, happens. You have a drought or you have excess, excess rain that hurts your crops. We, we can help you with that program. But we also have some programs where we have some loans that, that can provide some cold storage for your vegetables so you can store them until you're ready to sell them. So visit an FSA office to... Uh, to learn more. We have this new program that's been uh, in existence for a year uh, called the microloan program. And it's loans up to $35,000. There's less paperwork, uh, less, fewer requirements for these smaller loans, and they have been very successful. Uh, we, in one year, since we initiated this program throughout the United States, we had over 3,500 
microloans to, throughout the country. Uh, in Minnesota, USDA issued 98 microloans, and 38 of those microloans were for women and minority farmers. So many of you have children, of course, that, that are interested in the agricultural business. If one of your children is involved in 4-H, in the 4-H program through the Extension Service, is involved with uh, FFA through the school agricultural program, we have some loans called youth loans up to $5,000 for these students to, to have a project. Maybe buy a, a heifer and, and breed that heifer or maybe have a, a, a project for their livestock show. So we have some youth loans available up to $5,000 for youth because our youth will eventually become our new and beginning farmers here throughout the country. So uh, I mentioned the uh, non-insured assistance program that we have available. And so we have, we have a lot of programs that, that may be able to help you. And we want you to visit our office to learn more. So finally, I want to talk to you about language and culture. And if you were born in a different country, you have a different language other than English. Or your cultural heritage is different than your neighbors. Or if you look different than your neighbors, sometimes it's difficult. I, I kind of know how that personally feels. So all of us here today who are sponsors of this conference, I think our message is that it is our mission to make it better. So many of you are first generation Americans. You may have diff different experiences with the governments of your home countries. The United States government, including the Department of Agriculture, has very strong rules that are designed to honor the languages and cultures of the many people that live in this country. So the rules prohibit discrimination in all forms. So we have established procedures independent from what we normally do, which can help you if you experience discrimination. So I want you to know that USDA is committed in honoring your language and your cultures. President Obama said in his speech earlier this week, and quote, here in America, our success should depend not on where we were born, but the strength of our work ethic and the scope of our dreams, end quote. And you know, the president is right. Agriculture cannot succeed without a spirit of community and a spirit of cooperation. So in conclusion, I want to share with you some words that I as administrator of an agency that has 11,000 employees throughout the country consider what I call my customer pledge that USDA will provide prompt and courteous service by a knowledgeable, well-trained staff. It's important to me. USDA will fully inform and educate our customers regarding all aspects of FSA programs and will even help you with aspects of other agency programs, provide you that information. USDA will provide you with the most up-to-date information and respond in a timely manner to your request and your questions. And USDA will respect all human differences. That's very important for us. And USDA will provide you a good experience that will encourage your return. We may not be able to help you that time you visit our office, but we want to treat you in a way that you will come back to us and maybe we can help you next time. So. You know, my, my grandfather used to say, you may not remember their name, but you'll always remember how they treated you. And we want to treat you right in, in our offices. So again, visit an FSA office to learn more. We're there to serve you. Thank you for listening to me today, for putting up with my, my talk. I hope, I hope uh, so some of this may have been benefit to you. And uh, I wish you success in this conference. I think you've got a great program uh, for this day and, and tomorrow. So thank you all so much for having me.
Thank you, Mr. Garcia. I just want to add one footnote to what you've heard today. Um, it wasn't too long ago that I learned that um, the United States Department of Agriculture was founded by President Abraham Lincoln, and it was known as the People's Agency. And so you're the people, and they're here to serve you. Please don't be intimidated, because there are programs that they offer that can be helpful. I hope you have a wonderful conference. We're really excited that you're here. Um, so now we're going to go, and you have an hour to look at exhibits. I hope you learn a lot. Welcome, and have a great conference.